<laughs> I, th I think you guys can tell, but like, I'm a junkie for the late 90s, early 2000s time period. And that's um, kind of like the focus of what I want to do with this channel. So, um, without further ado, I'm just going to compare the best four footballers in this time period. Um, like, this is like a Watch Mojo kind of video, but it's not going to be like that throughout the time that I run this channel. So, you know, let's get to it. This is Mount Rushmore. Located in South Dakota, Mount Rushmore is famous for a lot of things. But one thing it definitely isn't famous for is having the carvings of the four most influential midfielders of the early 2000s. Interesting. So anyway, in 2020, these four guys are very um, controversial, I guess, in some ways. Because, you know, they have a lot of opinions that people aren't quite on board with. But, you know, back in 2000 to about 2003, these guys were absolutely at the peak of their powers. So, for the um, unprepared who didn't quite know who these guys are and just stumbled across this video, I'll go through them anyway. So, from left to right, you got Michael Voss on the furthest left. He was an incredibly tough captain for Brisbane. Uh, next to him you had James Hurd, who, who could play pretty much anywhere, um, played some great footy at Essendon. Mark Rusciuto, one of the toughest players I think I've ever seen, who played for Adelaide. And Nathan Buckley, one of the most skillful players the game has ever seen, who played for Collingwood. So these guys were footy as Mount Rushmore from the early 2000s, there's no doubt about it. These guys played the same way, they led their club, they won awards, they were right up there when it mattered on grand final day. Um, you know, the only, the only thing that's left us at all is you know, where they actually rank. And a lot of people say um, one of these guys is number one out of these four. Um, in South Australia, for instance, def people will definitely say Rusciuto. In Queensland, people will definitely say Voss. In Victoria, opinions split between Hurd and Buckley. So, this is my take on it. Um, I'm sure you won't agree with it. Let me know in the comments below anyway. But, um, yeah, here we go. Johnson as the sun begins to shine at the MCG. Kicks it straight to Lockyer, to Buckley, who unloads from 55 metres out! Buckley's gone! I was young at this point, I was about eight years old, but this is still one of the greatest performances in a grand final I've ever seen. And I really thought Collingwood are gonna win at this point. But uh, here's Nathan Buckley collecting his Norse medal in a losing side, which is really, really harsh. And I think I kind of summed him up a little bit. Like, that's probably not fair or anything like that, but he was an amazing leader, an amazing football who didn't quite have the side to lead to a premiership. But the fact he got him as far as they did was unbelievable in itself. So, you know, you got to give him credit for that. Buckley's incredible record at the Pies cements him as one of the club's all-time greats. Six Copeland trophies, seven All-Australian appearances, and a Brownlow on top of eight years of the captaincy. But I think you need to have a look at the videos just to see how good he truly was. So even with all those highlights, Nathan Buckley's impact on football is a bit split across commentators and fans in the AFL landscape, so here's why I think he should be on the Mount Rushmore of early 2000s footballers. The first of which is that he's a great ball winner. He could get it 40 times a game when it was a kind of a bit of a dying art in the 2000s, that he kind of brought it back. And you see it now so often with like Ablett and Dangerfield, 
you know, all those kinds of players can get 40 touches a game. Um, Nathan Buckley was a big key to bring him back back. The second one was his ability to just be up there on Brownlow night. Like, even in some rubbish Collingwood teams, especially under Tony Shaw, they were really bad. Nathan Buckley was still up there. And, you know, he went to another level under Mick Mulhouse. And that's the third point. He, his leadership in the early 2000s to take a reasonably average Collingwood side to, a grand, to two grand finals was unbelievable. I thought he was absolutely fantastic as a leader. Um, you know, he, he was able to just extract the football at crucial times and win the footy and win games for you. So that's why I think he should be on the Mount Rushmore, but he's number four on this list. Took a swing at a wrecking ball and I prayed for my downfall. McDougal heads for the boundary line. Maybe Murphy should have kicked. Bullet. How desperately unlucky we were, we did not get the absolute best out of this man, and yet this man was still one of the all-time greats. And people forget that. People forget how good he was just because of his coaching tenure, and that's not fair. James Hurd is a champion, and I'll leave it at that. When I say we didn't get to see the best of him, I mean that in the nicest possible way. We could have seen him play another 60 games, but he had so many years wiped out with bad injuries. like. He had those stress fractures in his foot in 1999 and we didn't know whether he's just going to come back alone and there he is winning a Norm Smith for next year. But he had that face injury in 02 which you know could have wiped out so many players confidence and yet there he was you know just getting back into the action, winning the hard ball, just doing what he had to do. He's such a resilient character and these highlights just goes to show how good he was. So yeah, James Hurd is a very deserving player to be on my Mount Rushmore from the early 2000s. And I think, again, like Nathan Buckley, there's three reasons why he should be there. The first one is his X Factor. Like, you could just play him anywhere. You could play him off half back. You could play him up half forward. You could play him in the midfield. You could play him one out in the goal square. And he'd be able to do the job for you. Um, the second one is his resilience. Um, as I said before, the amount of injuries he had and the fact he just managed to keep coming back and performing was just something to behold. And the third one, just like Buckley, his his leadership was insanely good. Like, the way he went about that Essendon team, which was relentless in its pursuit of glory, especially in 2000, it was just something to watch. Uh, and, you know, he deserved that Norm Smith medal on Grand Final Day against my beloved Demons, so, you know, what can you do? But yes, James Heard is the third best player, in my opinion, um, of these four players in the early 2000s. And let's go to number two. Just two our stats tell us they've only taken one mark inside 50, the Crows. Smart and Kudafidis to Rusciuto, the hero. Snap around the corner, bends it back. He's kicked that is a goal, goal guys. He has the kicked man. a miracle goal. <laughs> How lucky the Crows were to be blessed with an absolutely brilliant player in what just happened to be their best time in the AFL. But, one thing I will say about this guy, 
and we're so, so lucky to have it, is on YouTube. A guy by the name of Jeff Albertson has put together an hour worth of his footage. When you look up Mark Lashida on YouTube, it's right there, it's second on the list. And it's 63 minutes of his greatest highlights from a time where the Crows were just a simply incredible team. They, ma they won two premierships, they made a slew of preliminary finals, and Mark Ricciuto was leading the way. It's just a great watch. I recommend it for anybody who loved football around this period. But, uh, you know, to show how good he was, we've got to get on with the show and show his highlights, eh? Ricciuto is the only player on this list to play 300 games. That's not only a mark of his endurance and brilliance, but that's also a mark of how good Adelaide were consistently. He also was the main cog on Brownlow Medal Night when Adelaide won their two premierships. He polled 39 votes in those two years, and then of course he won the 2003 Brownlow in a tie with Buckley and Goods. So, just goes to show how incredibly consistent he was, how brilliant he was, but I think I think we need video just to show it. Well, way out on centre wing. The Crows drive it forward. Mickey Martin. Oh! Anderson on hands and knees. Gives it across the Cousins. A kick. Bang! Down he goes from the shoot. You have to be selfish inside 50. And it's still there at the moment. Primus and Ren. Oh, the Rashid. He's going to go. The back to the wall victories that the rest of Bulldogs need more now than ever before, Jared. It's just a display of the doggy spirit. Yep. Chris Kuta puts the ball on the party. He rips it. Martin Shaw is a very deserving player to be on the early 2000s Mount Rushmore. And again, there's three reasons for that. The first one is his toughness. Put simply, you did not want to get in his way, especially when he was angry. The second one was his ability to extract out of the stoppage, especially up forward. He was so dangerous up forward, it's so underrated how he could just extract the ball in dangerous positions and kick goals. And that's the third reason as well. Up forward, when he played up there, you, you knew he could take a mark one-on-one, -on -one and you knew he'd be able to kick the goals. He was so important. And that's why I think he's the second best player from his time period out of these four, which leaves just one player for number one. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down all around. Barnes and McDonald, McDonald out of the air. Still McDonald to Boss in the pocket. Boss close, he's done it. Has he? The captain, he's finished it off. How fitting. I can't exactly say I've endeared myself to the Coleman fans of this video, but Michael Voss has to be number one. He turned the Brisbane Bears and then the Brisbane Lions from a laughing stock into an absolute powerhouse with his leadership, and that's why he has to be number one. Put simply, Vossi was one of the toughest but fairest players I've ever seen. His attack on the ball was second to none, and he really led a Brisbane team with a lot of tough players to a lot of great moments from 2001 to 2003. As I can only tell you so many times, Michael Voss's best trait was his leadership. And from 2001 to 2004, the players voted him the best captain. That's all you need to know. But he also won five best and fairest at Brownlow. He was five times an All-Australian. And, of course, won those three premierships with the Brisbane Lions while captain. That is a one hell of a CD. And this is what it looked like. As the move begins, down towards Mal Michael he goes. Michael wants to play on. He gets clear. Voss is on the half forward line and he's got it. And he's just about. Two on two. Bradshaw to spoil. McRae, good work to knock it forward to Voss. Clean take, round the body for number oh, four. Play. He's got it. Voss has four in the first quarter. The Lions have seven. Bradshaw just to the right of screen if it does go into the square. Charman trying to send it there all the off. Sends it Bradshaw from 55 metres out. Can thump it. He does, but he started at left. It's going to go right towards the line. Still alive for Brisbane. Embley left it behind. Could be costly. Michael Watts. There isn't really a need to talk about why Michael Voss is so great. So I'll just tell you the three reasons why. First off, tough but fair. He was incredibly tough. He'd hit you with full force and then say great game at the end. 
The second one, his will to win. It was incredible. He just wanted to lead as hard as he could to get the ultimate result for his team and sacrifice himself as much as he could. And the third one, of course, is his leadership, much like the other three. But I reckon Michael Voss was the ultimate leader of his football club and it was just something else to watch, we'll be honest with you. So in review, this is my early 2000s Mount Rushmore. Number one, Michael Voss, one of the all-time great leaders of the game. Turned Brisbane from a laughing stock into one of the all-time great teams. Number two, Mark Rusciuto, the toughest player I've seen in the modern era. You did not want to get in his way, and one of the Adelaide Crows all-time greats along with Andrew McLeod. Number three, James Hurd. One of Essendon's all-time greats, his X-Factor, his ability to play anywhere, was just sensational. And number four, Nathan Buckley. One of the all-time greats of one of the biggest clubs in the land. Give him a ball from 55 to 60 out, he'll kick a goal every single time. The way he used the ball was just amazing. Do you agree with me or not? Let me know in the comments below. And that's it. Hey everyone, just uh, wanted to say a big thank you to all the boys and girls who've uh, supported my work so far up to this point. Um, sure there'll be a lot more videos to come, a lot more content, so make sure you give the page a like and subscribe and I'm sure there'll be a lot more content coming soon. Thank you very much.